You're watching Law & Order Special Victims Unit on NBC. What to expect from the XFL Draft tonight at 10. From the new center of Alabama, this is an NBC 13 News update. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Moore. Here's what's happening at this hour. Folks are gearing up for this weekend's Magic City Classic. Fans from all over are in Birmingham for what has turned into the biggest football game played in the Magic City. Also, investigators continue to look into an explosion at a Lipscomb home. Early details indicate something ignited, a gas pilot light. And new at 10, we'll tell you about hope for folks who bring adopted children into their homes. Your news coming up at 10. Coming up on NBC 13 News at 10, the fun and festivities get underway in the 2000 Magic City Classic in the streets of Birmingham. Also, police investigate the burglary and vandalism of two churches in the Birmingham area. Those stories in all the day's news coming up at 10. This brain-altering box will change the way you think about clean. Meet the latest thinking in washing machines from Kenmore Elite. It bounces sheets, skirts, and shirts through a shimmering shower of H2O instead of spinning them through dirty water. Washes out stains, washes in clean. Think you don't need a new washing machine? Think again. Introducing Calypso Wash Motion, exclusively from Kenmore Elite. Now you can get a thousand minutes of nighttime state-to-state -state long distance and unlimited internet access for just 30 bucks a month because some things were just meant to be together. Hook up with Sprint and Earthlink at 1-800-PIN-DROP. Later on the Tonight Show, Jay rolls the dice. Come on, baby. Yeah. And comes up with lucky numbers, John Travolta. And talk show royalty, Queen Latifah chats with Jay about the gift of gab. Like your local news next. Coming up, we'll take you to Legion Field where Reverie is underway for tomorrow's Magic City Classic. Birmingham residents are seeing relaxed water restrictions and another Friday night of football is in the books. Highlights next. This is Eli Gold. Start your engines. The race is on to Town & Country Ford, Birmingham's newest Ford dealership. They're speeding towards the best deals on new and used cars and trucks, plus the fastest service outside of Pitt Road. You won't get the runaround at Town & Country Ford. Just great automobiles at great prices, where the winner is always the customer. Town & Country Ford, big town selection and service, low country prices, and a whole new attitude to serve you. Friday and Saturday are your special days at Parisian. With store-wide savings. Like men's leather jackets, $219.99. Save 30% on ladies' boots. And Klein watches, $69.99. Take 40% off kids' clothing. And chenille sweaters, just $29.99. Look in your paper for a coupon to save an extra 20%. Plus, get a free 14-piece gift with any 1950 Elizabeth Arden purchase. Your special days, Friday and Saturday at Parisian. We've got you covered live from the news center of Alabama. This is NBC 13 News at 10. Lots happening in Birmingham tonight. In fact, we've got a pregame favorite for the Magic City Classic. Who's the favorite? I'm Bill Fitzgerald. I'll have a preview coming up. Water restrictions are eased in the Birmingham metropolitan area. We'll tell you when you can once again water your lawn and garden. And as All Hallows Eve creeps closer, Oak Mountain wants to take you on the ride of your life. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Moore. Thank you for joining us this Friday evening. You might say that Birmingham is throwing a big party all weekend. The Magic City Classic won't be played until tomorrow afternoon, but the revelry has already begun as fans are getting ready for kickoff. NBC 13's Bill Fitzgerald joins us live from Legion Field, where some of the fun is going on. And Bill, tell me, are people really focused on the game right now? Well, that's a good question, Mike, because there's so much going on. You might say I'm in the middle of a hornet's nest. Although in a real hornet's nest, you won't find fried catfish and barbecued ribs. A lot of Alabama State fans right here. But there's so much going on in Birmingham tonight that the game is kind of a distant prospect because there's football, film, and the city itself to celebrate. 
pageantry and pride were on display in Birmingham Friday night, right on Main Street, in this case, 3rd Avenue. Now we're getting the exposure that we needed to get for a long time. This band has been a nice band for a long time. The Magic City Classic has brought football fans and film fans into Birmingham for the city's biggest football event, an occasion some say could bring in as much as $20 million. Take the Field, a documentary about bands at historically black colleges, was funded and produced in Alabama and premiered Friday. In some ways, I like, like to think that this is a crowning event of the weekend. We're definitely going to get everyone motivated to go out to the game tomorrow. So this is sort of a big pep rally for the big game. And if a band competition or documentary wasn't enough, and finding a spare hotel room was too difficult, the more traditional football celebrations were easily available. Uh, we got about five uh, shoulders and two briskets, beef briskets. I got an uncle here from California. I got friends in from Lexington, uh, Kentucky, uh, Louisiana. So it's just one big happy family enjoying themselves. And as the city begins to enjoy itself for a long festive weekend, revelers say they're ready to make sure the Magic City Classic continues. So. He's gonna carry it over. That's the next generation. He's the man who passed the baton on to MJ, Mitchell Jr. Now, many of the folks here say they're ready to get a good night's sleep despite the present circumstances, and they're going to be cheering for their team tomorrow, Alabama State. And finally, we have one message for a young man here. Who's your favorite newscaster? Mike Moore. There you have it. Reporting live from Legion Field, Bill Fitzgerald, NBC 13 News at 10. I like him. It is something residents of Metropolitan Birmingham haven't done in quite some time, and that is to water their lawns. But now some relaxed restrictions may have your lawn looking a little bit greener. In Birmingham City Limits and unincorporated regions of Jefferson County, the revised rules allow watering from 6 p.m. Friday until 6 p.m. Sunday. Mountain Brook allows limited watering anytime on Saturdays and Sundays. Homewood says locals can water Friday and Saturday between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. only, then Sunday between 5 and midnight. Now, in Vestavia, the rule is midnight Friday through midnight Sunday. In North Shelby County, the rules are 6 o'clock Friday through 6 o'clock Sunday. Finally, in Moody, city leaders will revise their rules next week. Local leaders warned that watering outside the specified time could still bring on a fine and or jail time. Investigators continue to look into a house explosion in West Jefferson County in the city of Lipscomb. The explosion happened at this home at First Avenue just after 2.30 this afternoon. No one was injured in this blast. Firefighters say it appears the explosion happened after a chemical from an insecticide fogger device mixed with a, a gas pilot light. One man is in custody and Tuscaloosa police continue to search for another in a drive-by shooting. 20-year-old Richard Earl Sims is charged with capital murder in connection with the shooting death of 16-year-old Christopher Nixon. Nixon was just one of the victims of a drive-by shooting at Creekside Village in Tuscaloosa earlier this week. Police are now asking for your help in locating 22-year-old Thomas McCoy Jr. He's wanted for questioning in the murder. Police are still investigating the vandalism of two Catholic churches. Our Lady of the Valley in Indian Springs, the community of Shelby County, was vandalized Tuesday night. Extensive damage was done to the church property. Wednesday, $2,000 worth of damage was done to St. Peter's in Hoover. A church official believes the two incidents of vandalism were done by members of a satanic cult. Some tax relief could be on the way for folks who choose to adopt children. Alabama's Spencer Backers is sponsoring the amendment as part of the tax relief bill. The plan calls for the tax credit for adoption expenses to be increased from $5,000 to $10,000. Backers hopes it will encourage folks to open up their homes to children who need to be adopted. Right now, it costs anywhere between eight and $25,000 to adopt a child. The final push to the presidency is underway for Democrat Al Gore and Republican George W. Bush. Campaigning near Pittsburgh, Gore told supporters Republicans have saddled Americans with deadweight debt. He says runway budgets are a thing of the past, and he's for a smaller, smarter government. Gore said he won't let Republicans give a massive tax cut to the rich. Gore also said he's proposing a major tax credit to help fund technology research. Meanwhile, another round of attacks from George W. Bush that portray Al Gore as a friend of the bloated government. Campaigning in Michigan today, Bush said Gore trusts the government, while Republicans trust the, right the people. people. Bush is also keeping a focus on character by saying he keeps meeting parents who don't want another president to let them down. With Halloween just around the corner, Oak Mountain is filled with screams of terror. Well, coming up, 
will take you on a haunted hayride where ghosts and goblins are already haunting many. And will it be a ghoulish forecast for this holiday weekend? We'll let you know coming up right after the break. Tonight, Jay's all new with an election 2000 update. Hey, you really want to scare Al Gore this uh, Halloween? Dress up as Ralph Nader. Ooh. Then John Travolta with trick or treat tips. Those fun bars ain't no fun. Right, oh yeah. Plus, uh -huh. Queen Latifah, celebrity masquerade, and Halloween pranks you don't want to try at home. Then on Conan SNL's Tracy Morgan tonight. Portions of NBC 13 News are brought to you in part by Central Alabama Mazda. <laughs> Car and driver ranked the Mazda Protégé ES the number one compact sedan, beating out Honda, Toyota, and Nissan in an extensive comparison test. But the experts didn't stop there. They say it offers BMW Verve for less than half the price. And now Mazda is celebrating with $1,000 cash back on every new 2000 Protégé. To which we could only add... So, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so. Chris was like my shadow. She was always there. For three years, she drive down from her job at Kraft to tutor me. My grades went way up. For 40 years, the Philip Morris companies, including Kraft, have given to programs like Chicago's Off the Street Club, and our employees have volunteered their time to help make a difference in people's lives. When she left to have a baby, I told her I hoped she'd have a daughter. She already did a great job helping to raise a son. Working to make a difference, the people of Philip Morris. Lexus IS with a 215 horsepower VVTi engine, e-shift transmission, and remarkably tight handling, which in recent tests easily outcorned a certain other sports sedan. NBC 13 closed captioning is sponsored by Alagasco. Now, NBC 13 First Alert Weather with meteorologist Stephanie Walker. And we can obviously add another dry day to the books as just a few scattered clouds are showing up on the satellite and radar composite right now. Most of the showers and thunderstorms continue to remain well to the west of us, and it's been about three weeks now since we've actually had any measurable rain out at the airport. That was last on October 6th. We had uh, over one inch of rain. Notice for the month, we're still behind, obviously, over an inch, almost five inches behind as far as the year is concerned. So, Definitely need some rainfall, but it's not looking promising, at least through the weekend. Numbers at this hour, pretty mild, 64 in Birmingham and Anniston, 61 degrees. Winds are generally calm right now, and really over the next 24 to 48 hours, maybe just a few areas of fog as we head into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow afternoon, we do have a frontal boundary that'll be skirting down to the north. Maybe a shower across northern Mississippi and extreme northwestern Alabama, but most of the moisture will obviously stay well to the west of us back into the Plain States. And even as we head into the second half of our weekend for Sunday as well, looking very dry. Tonight, mild areas of fog developing as we head into tomorrow morning. We will see upper 50s by wake-up time tomorrow. And for all the football games across the region, lots of hazy sunshine. Again, dry conditions for just about everybody. And we do have that Magic uh, City Classic kicking off at 3 o'clock. High temperatures for just about everybody tomorrow should be in the upper 70s and low 80s. And then again, check out the dry conditions. At least through the beginning of next week, by around Wednesday, we'll start to bring back the slight chance for a couple of showers. Otherwise, highs will stay unseasonably warm. And of course, for Halloween Day on Tuesday, looks like temperatures around 4 o'clock should be at 78. And then right around 7 o'clock, we'll see low 70s. So a frightfully mild forecast. I'll tell you what isn't Halloween. frightful. Hair immaculately quaff. Oh, beautiful thanks. outfit. She's on her way out tonight. I'll pay you later. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, Birmingham was the place to be, especially if you were in the mood to laugh. Coming up, we'll take you to the gut-busting, tear-gushing flavor of the nation's premier traveling comedy show. And laughter turns the terror at the Oak Mountain Haunted Hayride on Halloween 13. I'm Pat O'Brien on the next Access Hollywood. Ricky Martin shakes his bonbon to help the less fortunate. Plus, Jim Carrey dishes the grim details of what he had to endure to play the Grinch. Next, Access Hollywood. Monday at 6.30 on NBC 13. Hi, folks. Hope you have a great night. I'm Dan Walters here at Sarah Chevrolet in Birmingham, home of the nice guys. We believe in two things. Bigger selection, 
better prices, especially right now during Sellathon 2000, folks. Profit takes a backseat to volume. Everything's on sale. Hey, take a look at this. Tough Silverado's $287 a month. Roomy Silverado Extra Gabs, $299 a month. Plus, we have 0% financing for 60 months. Hello, free money, one place. Sarah Chevrolet, Gardendale, and 1170 Center Point Parkway. You come and see us. Twelve days after Judge Harwood was sworn into the circuit court, his father, a former Supreme Court judge, passed away. In leafing through my father's Bible, I came across a passage he had circled, Doth thou law judge any man before we hear him and know what he doeth. This great principle of justice, assuring a full search for the truth with equal justice for all, guides Judge Harwood today, just as it always guided his father. Judge Harwood, 38 years of experience, a great Supreme Court justice from day one. Ford trucks have always played a part through my whole life. I've driven from F100 to 700s, but everything we have is Ford. We, we like it that way. Grab Ranger with $2,000 cash back. A great deal on a great truck. That's $2,000 cash back. If anybody in my family would show up not driving a Ford, they would have to park down the street, and then we could shuttle them in a Ford. See Adamson, Long Lewis, Ernest McCarty, Jim Skinner, or Town & Country Ford today. You've heard about Judge Roy Moore, the Ten Commandments judge. But you should know the man behind the robe. A loving husband and father of four children, Judge Moore is devoted to his family and believes in the faith that has inspired this nation from the beginning. On November 7th, elect a Chief Justice who will stand up for us all. One nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo is more refined and civilized than ever. Rest assured, it still hasn't lost its animal instincts. Now returning Daimler Chrysler lessees with preferred credit can get a $3.29 a month lease on a two-wheel drive Grand Cherokee Laredo. On Halloween 13 tonight, ghosts and goblins don't just hang out in haunted houses. They apparently enjoy haunted hayrides as well. Like this one at Oak Mountain, the haunted hayride features a visit from the Headless Horseman, a chainsaw massacre, and other spooky scenes. Proceeds from the hayride benefit the Boy Scouts of America. Rides take place through Sunday at the Oak Mountain Stables from 7 p.m. until midnight. Now, if you would like to take part but need directions, simply log on to NBC13.com and then click on News Story Links. Meanwhile, the screams at the Boutwell tonight were not screams of terror, but rather roars of laughter. As part of the festivities leading up to tomorrow's kickoff of the annual Magic City Classic game, a special deaf comedy jam was held tonight. Taking the stage tonight, J. Anthony Brown, as well as Birmingham native Ricky Smiley and 95 Jams personality, Sid Delaney. Yeah, it sounds like a good time, doesn't it? That's going to do it for this Friday night. We thank you for joining us. Don't go away. Jim Dunaway and the NBC 13 sports team now with a look at Sports Extra. Well, I tell you what, I love the funny man from 95.7 Jams. We've got a lot of funny men tonight in high school football. Plus, we'll get you ready for college football, the Magic City Classic. For the 59th time they get together, we gather together next on NBC 13 Sports. The magic's all around us, everywhere. Silver star! Day and night time, splendor fills the air. Every day is payday during November at Silver Star Resort and Casino. We're giving away $10,000 every day, so why wait for payday when you can win ten grand every day in November at Silver Star Resort and Casino? It's everything you want it to be. Dear Judge Stewart, you are to be complimented for a magnificent job. We will continue to pray that God will give you wisdom. Dear Judge Stewart, thank you for the impact you made on our little girl's life. I've always prayed that God would take care of my family, and he did just that. Dear Judge Stewart, thank you for your judgment on behalf of my children. I pray the Lord blesses you richly as you continue your work with young you people. You are recognized as a leader who helps create a better future for our children. Judge Lynn Stewart for Alabama Supreme Court. We'd like to thank you from head to toe. It's McCurdy.
praise Customer Appreciation Days. We're saying thank you with an extra 20% savings on almost everything from head to toe. Save an extra 20% store-wide during McRae's Customer Appreciation Days, Friday and Saturday. I believe I take a balanced approach in what I do because I don't have any personal or political agenda. I tell you, as long as I follow the law, I can't really worry about what people say or what people think. Now, if the judge doesn't follow the law, then maybe he needs to worry about what people say or what they think. I know I've always tried to be fair, I've always tried to be reasonable, and I've always been honest. And I believe if you do that, you'll have the kind of reputation you can be proud of. Portions of NBC 13 Sports are brought to you in part by Town & Country Ford 2000 clearance sale now in progress. Live from Studio 13, this is Sports Extra with Jim Dunaway. Hockey tonight. Down at the Civic Center, Mike Zaruna's first home game is the Bulls head coach, the new head coach. His home guy's looking pretty good early. Matt Turek with a goal right there and the Bullies on top. They beat the same New Orleans Brass team last evening for their first win under Zruna. They're one and two. The Brass score there to even it up. But Stefan Rivard, one of my favorite hockey names, Stefan Rivard will get the puck up front, puts it inside the left post. It's a goal. There was got about seven minutes to play down there. They're throwing punches. It's in a 4-4 tie late in the third. No tricks or treats inside Studio 13 tonight. We've got high school football in a moment, but first the fine print of pro contracts. All you Braves fans have to be happy with this news out of Atlanta tonight. The Braves have exercised their option on the contract of former Cy Young Award winner John Smoltz. The Braves will pay Smoltz $8 million next season, and that keeps him from becoming a free agent. It's a big gamble for Atlanta, though. Smoltz missed all of last season after having a ligament transplant surgery right here in Birmingham back on March 23rd. His elbow troubles go all the way back to 1994. Now, the Braves were not just throwing money away, though. The team did not pick up the option on backup first baseman Wally Joyner. The 15-year vet now becomes a free agent. Everyone's a free agent. At the XFL draft up in Chicago, Birmingham Thunderbolts head coach Jerry DiNardo has been working the phones, finding the best players available when they pick second overall Saturday. It looks like the Bolts will go quarterback in the first round, and I'm hearing former Florida State quarterback Casey Weldon is tops on their list. The Bolts will also announce their list of 11 protected players that no other team can draft tomorrow morning. These are regional players, and some of the familiar names on the Bolts list will be former Auburn running back James Bostic, the other Alexander at Alabama, Curtis, Quincy Jackson, and offensive lineman Cleve Roberts of Troy State. The Bolts pick second, and we'll have a report from Chicago tomorrow night right here on Sports Extra. Now, the college football world will focus in on the big Nebraska-Oklahoma showdown this weekend. New Alabama State head coach L.C. Coles will be watching the old battle between the BCS polls, number one and number two teams as well. Coles played at Nebraska, and he loves that rivalry. But he's got his own rivalry to worry about, the 59th Magic City Classic. His Alabama State team can virtually lock up a spot in the SWAC championship game with a win over Alabama A&M. Not bad for a team to pick to finish dead last this year. Yeah, I put it like this, and, and these kids have surprised me. And the only thing I keep telling them, the magic for us is Tinkerbell. He comes out here and wave the wine over our kids, and, and that's been the secret for our kids. Well, you know, he's going to have his team ready. We start. He worked for me when I was a head coach at Eastern Michigan, and uh, we've been friends for a lot of years. And uh, But tomorrow we'll, we'll, put, we'll put it all beside us, and we'll be friends again after the game. They are expecting a huge crowd tomorrow, maybe the largest in Magic City Classic history. If A&M wins, they'll keep their hopes alive for a shot at the SWAC championship game as well. The Arkansas Razorbacks will try and end Auburn's conference championship dreams tomorrow in Jordan-Hare Stadium. The Hawks had a brief workout this afternoon over in Columbus, Georgia. That's where head coach Houston Nutt talked about the importance of this SEC West game in his free-loving style looking for an upset. You know, you can't play like that. Uh, we want them to have fun, play as hard as you can. We've always been known for a team to play extremely hard and um, 
we just want them to turn it loose. And we know we're playing a very good team, and they're on a roll right now. And now, Arkansas has had nine players lost with season-ending injuries, but their starting quarterback, Robbie Hampton, is back thanks to the off week, and he'll start for the Hogs against Auburn. Pay-per-view television only for the Auburn and Alabama games. The homecoming contest with Central Florida for the Tide will have no effect at all on the SEC Western Division standings. But Alabama is desperately seeking anything to hold on to that's good these days. The locker room has been very tense since this loss up in Knoxville. You know, I told people, you know, you need to look in a mirror and, and do some um, some self-checking. If you if you can go and look at the film and, and see that you're giving all your all, then um, there's nothing anybody can say to you. But if you can look and say, I could have done this, I could have done that, then you definitely have something to work on. Now, Tide fans should be a little scared of Central Florida. They can put up points in last week's Zouda McGadley touchdown pass was, get this, only the second touchdown pass this season for Alabama. Wow. UAB can relate. They need a map to find the end zone these days. And despite having the nation's second best defense, UAB will have to find some offense to beat East Carolina tomorrow up in Greenville, North Carolina. It's a revenge game for the Pirates. Last year, they were nationally ranked when UAB upset them. And their players have said it all week. Last year, they shattered our dreams. Now it's time for payback. We've played some offenses that our defense could hold the score down. And and, uh, but now with East Carolina and Southern Miss and Cincinnati is a really good offensive team. Uh, we've got all three of these coming up. I think we've got to score more points and we may have to be more wide open to do that. And maybe we're starting to get some of these guys back to where we can do that. I hope so. Jeff Aaron starts at quarterback again. He's 2-0 and as a starter, but UAB has scored just 13 and 14 points in those wins. So other state games Saturday, Miles is on the road at Lane College. Sanford and West Alabama are also road tripping. Stillman and Troy State have home games. Tuskegee tries to stay unbeaten over at Clark Atlanta. Let's start talking high school football. Big win for Vincent tonight. They beat Hell County by a score of 21 to 13. Let's head over to Briarwood now where Demopolis and Briarwood played. The winner wraps up their region championship. It was supposed to be a really close game, but uh-uh. Briarwood's Lions look too good. Alex Mitchell to Rusty Anderson right here in the Lions trying to defend what was their 3A state championship last year. They're in 5A now and looking pretty good at it. Right here, that is Tim Castile. He's the superstar. Only a sophomore. We've been calling his, his name out for three years. He gets the 36-yard touchdown right there. His brother's even looking good, only a freshman. Briarwood wins it 41-21. Our Mindy Burns at this game. She asked Tim Castile the question that every Alabama fan wants to know. Hey, are you going to Alabama someday? The odds that you may be going to Alabama someday? Uh, I don't know. Right now, I have no idea why I want to go to school. That's just, I, I have no idea. I like the coaches down there. I went down there for a camp, and I like it down there, but I have no idea. Always, uh, I'm always expecting close games, but at the same time, our kids played very well, and uh, so did Demopolis. They played a good game, so, uh, but it ended uh, in our favor, and we're thankful for that. 41-21, Briarwood wins it. Now, Sam Collins is one of the up-and-coming receivers on the Alabama football team. Now, before he wore crimson, though, he played at Fayette County High School, where he teamed with Luke Tucker. Now, the two set high school record after high school record in their tour of Friday night duties. Let's head all the way over to Fayette County High School. One of our favorite places to stop off. It's our first chance to get there this year. And, boy, we saw a good game. Spencer Pennington to Adam Brand right here. You never get too much brand in your diet, folks. Nice little completion right there. Will Newton right here is going to put Fayette up on top 10 to 7 with a nice little kick between the uprights there. We got to go back to Brand. More Brand, guys. Spencer to Brand. Big pickup right there. And then that late hit. Throw the flag. Thank you very much. 15 more yards. Dwight Savage is going to get the touchdown for Fayette County. They beat Brooks. Some people called the upset. We thought Fayette would win it anyway. They beat Brooks tonight in a huge battle of top five teams. They win it tonight, 38-27. Another huge game up the road at Susan Moore. Who let them dogs out? Woo, woo, woo. The dogs of Susan Moore up there in the dark jerseys looking pretty good. Justin Waddle waddles his way into the end zone for six. Touchdown, Susan Moore on top. But here comes Ohachi back trying to work their way into some state playoff magic. Greg Brewster from his 12 all the way down to the doorstep for the Chiefs. Gets knocked out of bounds there. They'll finish the deal with a touchdown, but it's not enough tonight. Susan Moore holds on in a nail-biter. They win this one by one digit, 
15-14 the final there. Down to Columbiana, the county seat in Shelby County, where I say hello to my friends, the Enos and McCombs family down there tonight. Shelby County hosting Chilton County, Chilton County in white. Jeff Hunt to Daryl Moore right there. That play picks up 25 yards for Chilton County. And when you run the football as good as Chilton County does, look at this run right here, the nice blocking by those big hogs up front, even some good blocks downfield. You run the ball like that, that's going to set up some more passing, and that's what they do. Hunt's going to find James Gamble in the back of the end zone. You can't cover it any better than that, but he's there. So it when there ain't, where there ain't, right? Chilton County wins it 39 to 19 this evening. All your scores in the Mountain Dew ticker. Now, here's another reason to like football this time of year, not these young ladies, though. We're talking about rival games. Pelham and Thompson fits into that category. It was well into the 1980s before Pelham ever beat Thompson. Times have changed, but the Warriors were looking to keep Pelham out of the playoffs tonight. Down between the hills of Old Salura, Larry Simmons Field, one of the best running backs in the state. Are you watching recruiting experts? Deontay Tannehill's a man. He had 311 yards last week against Selma. Tonight, the 37-yard touchdown run that puts Thompson on top. Ricky Seals thinking maybe his Warriors can knock Pelham out of the playoffs. Uh-uh. Todd Wise, touchdown. It's the game decider. Pelham beats Thompson. 24-21, the Panthers and Rick Rhodes on their way to the state playoffs. Another rivalry game, Hewitt Trustful and Clay Chalkville, our own Stephanie Walker using the microphone for a rattle earlier at that game. Clay Chalkville, a school made up of former Hewitt Trustful kids. It's a new school. They won the state championship. Still a big rivalry game. Brandon Cox, great quarterback for Hewitt Trustful, completes 70% of his passes, gets one there, leads to a touchdown. Good defense, saves another touchdown here. Jordan Roberson knocks that one away. Tavares Doyle is the playmaker for Clay Chalkful. He gets a big gain right here, but tonight, Hewitt Trustful, folks, forget the conservative offense of Jack Wood. They put up a lot of points this year. 31-24, Hewitt Trustful now looking maybe to be number two in that region. We had to break more Mountain Dew ticker, more NASCAR talk, and a lot more when we come back right here on The X. This could be the start of a beautiful remodel. The Fall Home Show presents a home improvement and decorating extravaganza at the BJCC October 27th through 29th. Over 200 quality exhibitors providing ideas, selection, service, and value. Food Giants Food Fest with free food and coupons to delight your appetite. The Outback Southern Style Might with a sport court, putting green, golf simulator, spas, playground equipment, table tennis, saunas, and RVs. 12 and under are free to trick or treat. Skip them all. The Fall Home Show's got it all. Twelve days after Judge Harwood was sworn into the circuit court, his father, a former Supreme Court judge, passed away. In leafing through my father's Bible, I came across a passage he had circled, Doth outlaw judge any man before we hear him and know what he doing. This great principle of justice, assuring a full search for the truth with equal justice for all, guides Judge Harwood today, just as it always guided his father. Judge Harwood, 38 years of experience, a great Supreme Court justice from day one. Hello, I'm Jim Burke. When I acquired Pontiac GMC in Azuzu from Steel City, I personally guaranteed that we would become the number one Pontiac GMC Azuzu dealer in the Southeast. My guarantee requires that I must liquidate Steel City's current inventory of over 200 units at the Steel City location no later than October 31st. This opportunity rarely happens. Come see for yourself and get the deal of a lifetime. Act now because I expect this inventory will be sold within a matter of days. They've taken God and the Bible out of our schools. They've pulled the Ten Commandments off the classroom walls. Now they're after the Boy Scouts, calling them a hate group because they won't let homosexual men be scout leaders. It's time to take our country back from those who are tearing it down. George W. Bush and Al Gore will do nothing. One candidate isn't afraid to fight back. Pat Buchanan. Vote for the third party that puts families first. Vote Buchanan for president. Finding the right costume driving you batty? Drive over to Big Kmart's How to Halloween sale and you'll have dozens of the latest and greatest costumes to choose from. Kids' costumes are on sale as low as $4.99. Plus, name your treat and presto, you get fun-sized bags for just $1.88. It's all here at Big Kmart's How to Halloween sale. All its savings so good it's scary. So hurry right in.
Log on to NBC13.com for your chance to win tickets to the Christmas Village 2000 Arts and Crafts Show November 2nd through 5th. NBC13.com, we've got you covered. You're ready to buy a new truck, van, or SUV. But when it comes to the payments, you're baffled by the fuzzy math. Well, at Devan Lowe, say goodbye to the fuzzy math. Through October 31st, financing starts at zero APR on select GMC Sonomas, Grand Ams, and even Bonneville. Just get your best price and divide by 60 months. No finance charges give you lower payments. Grand Ams. Zero APR. Grand Prix, zero APR. Sonoma, zero APR. Bonneville, zero APR. Zero APR means no fuzzy math at the all new Devan Low. Back on your Friday X, Aniston in the dark jerseys hosting Silicaga. Leon Davis to the X man, Xavier Brooks. He gets a nice game there, and then Leon's going to light up the board like neon. He throws the home run to downtown Jimmy Brown. Aniston wins it tonight, 21 to nothing. Winona and Minor. Over there in Adamsville, Winona looking good in the white jersey. Avia Stallworth with a nice game. He doesn't have number one on his jersey for nothing. It's going to set up a big field goal kick from DeBerry and Jackson. It's good. Oh, I don't do that as good as Dan Patrick, do I? Sorry. Stephen Cordy and Randy Agee hook up here for minor. Boy, the tenacious Tigers look good tonight. They beat Winona with their own field goal and several touchdowns. 27-3, to Winona's playoff hopes have ended. The Winston Cup drivers have the weekend off on the NASCAR circuit. Bobby Labonte is the points leader, and he's also a pretty good Frankenstein in the recent Coke commercials. Labonte, Dale Jarrett, and Earnhardt, Jeff Burton, Tony Stewart, and Bill Elliott have a really good time with some of the old scary movie classics. And these guys have some pretty good Halloween memories as well. The best memory I had of Halloween was the year that my mother dressed up like a witch on a rocking chair with our solid black cat, and I sat in a cardboard box that was painted like a casket. And uh, the kids had to go past her and open up this casket to get the candy, and I would pop out and scare the kids to where they'd run down the street. I used to hate kids like Tony. Now, when they take their costumes off, they'll travel to Phoenix for next weekend's race. UAB plans to be racing up and down the court this year in basketball. Murray Bartow has brought in a little size and a little speed. The expectation is simple at UAB to put a little madness back into March. I think we've really improved ourselves over a year ago. Much better speed, more athleticism, better size. I think we can score the ball a little bit better and hopefully defend a little bit better. So we think it's going to be a good team. Mo Findley is missing a lot of practice with back problems that could nag him all season. Adam Harrington is the big new face at Auburn workouts. A one time all ACC fresh freshman transferred to Auburn last year and had to sit out. Now he's a welcome playmaker to a Tiger team that will not start the season ranked in the top 25 like Alabama, but they may be tournament ready by March. Well, you can look at it both ways. Some people ask, are you surprised to be in some people's top 25? Or are you surprised to be? I don't even know who's predicted what. Uh, I, you know, this team, you know, it, it, it doesn't matter. Now, speaking of Alabama in the top 25, the first AP poll comes out a week from Monday. The SEC media days are here in Birmingham next week. They're telling me right now, bear with me. Oh, yeah, the Bulls have just beaten New Orleans 5-4 to four down at the Civic Center. They've now won two in a row. That's going to do it for this Friday night edition of Sports Extra. For the entire Sports Extra crew, including my buddy Wes Harrell on the ticker down low, I'm Jim Dunaway. You folks have a good night. We'll see you tomorrow at your favorite college football stadium. Go Sooners.